see if I'm live. Yep, I'm live. Hey guys, good morning. Um, this is going to be a very interesting sermon for me. Uh, because I'm going to have to tell you who I who I kind of was as a child and and sometimes uh, being vulnerable is hard but I'm gonna do it because it has something to do with this message I was always a, a very um, sensitive child I didn't like hearing about people being ill-treated slavery or the Holocaust or anything like that um, when I was 10, not 10, when I was 15, uh, we were supposed to, I was, as part of my grade 10 history class, I was um, supposed to go to the Holocaust Center um, with my class, but I was so paralyzed with sadness and fear and grief because of what we talked about, what we had been talking about in history class. Um, I didn't go, I stayed home. And the next day when I went to school, I felt so like a kind of a, a not a failure, but I felt like a, I was a wuss. Like everyone else could, could see could see the horrific images and see the treatment and see whatever and just go on but for some reason it would stay in my mind it would it would um, the images that I saw in school uh, would would stay in my mind and they would fester and I wouldn't say anything um, to my mom, but she knew that there was a problem, so she, uh, let me stay home, but I still felt, uh, like a failure. So, um, so, I avoided, like the plague, anything, any books or movies or anything to do with that period of in history with the Holocaust and World War II because just I I couldn't handle it um, so this week um, the Lord um, the Lord took me to two books <laughs> Um, first of all, he had me read, um, he had me read, um, the world, um, the world we knew by Alice Hoffman. And for some reason, I was drawn to this book. I went on on the library site. Um, the Toronto Public Library has a free site. So I went on there and um, and when you log in, there's like book choices. They're just like the most popular and random book choices. And one of them was The World We Knew. And for some inexplicable reason, um, I was drawn to this book. And when I clicked on the listing sample, it was um, a fictional book about uh, World War II Germany and the Holocaust. And I was like, no, I'm not going there. It's too emotional for me. I'm not doing it, but for some inexplicable reason, I just couldn't, 
shape the feeling that I had to read this book. So I borrowed it, read it, um, and the first night I read it, it was the same thing as me being, being a child. The emotions were still there. The images I couldn't get out of my head. And I was like, I knew I shouldn't have read that book. And anyway, so I finished that book and I said, thank God I got through it. And, you know. Uh, thank God I got over it, and I did it. So, like I said a few weeks ago, I joined a book club, and last month's reading for the book club was a book called The Choice by Doc, Dr. Edith Eager. Um, and when, and for some inexplicable reason I felt drawn to read this book. I don't often keep up with the book club all the way because they go so fast. So I usually stay at my own pace. I, I usually know what they're reading, but I usually just stay at my own pace and, and read the books at my own time and watch the interviews um, at my own time. Uh, but this time, um, when I saw that they were reading The Choice uh, last month, I was like, okay, okay, because for some inexplicable reason, uh, I think it was God, um, um, I just felt drawn to read this book as well. Guess what it was about? <laughs> It was about a Holocaust survivor um, who made it through the death camps. And I thought, okay, Lord, why are you having me uh, read about the Holocaust twice in one week? And I didn't understand that. I said, I'm not Jewish. I said, I'm like, wh why? And he said, you need to face uh, your emotions when it comes to this time in history. And um, he, he said, well, he, when you were a child, you just kept these emotions bottled and didn't deal with them. You didn't talk about the images you saw. You didn't talk about the horrible things you felt. You didn't talk about the grief. You just kind of swept it under the rug and didn't deal with it and didn't go and didn't go on a field trip, didn't watch the movies, didn't, didn't deal with it. He said, this is bigger than World War II, the Holocaust. This is about you dealing with your emotions having to do with that time in history. He's like, he's like, what I want you to do, Rachel, is when you feel some emotional pull or when you feel fear or uh, uncertainty or anxious, I need you to stop the tape, stop the audio listening, and tell me what you're feeling, tell me what you're, what you're seeing. And then, okay, so I did it. So when I felt anxious and when I felt uh, fearful, I would stop the tape and tell the, tell the Lord what I was feeling what I was seeing, I didn't bottle it up. And can I tell you, I had one of the best sleeps that night ever. Like I didn't have any nightmares, I didn't, you know, 
I wasn't anxious. And I said, Lord, wh what happened? He said, because you let out those emotions. He's like, when you were a child or a teenager and you felt scared or anxious, you didn't let your your emotions out, you just kind of bottled them up and didn't say anything. And he, and I'm like, oh, he's like, you need to emote your emotions. You need to speak them. You need to give voice to them. This is, this is, this exercise was more than about a time in history that is horrible but it was about you confronting those emotions and giving voice to them and dealing with them and a lot of you out there listening to me today have kept emotions bottled up and he's saying like i said in the title he said take the lid off the bottle he said you need he said you need god said you need to give voice to those emotions you cannot run from them you cannot uh, say that they don't exist because they do exist and they'll get more pronounced and more pronounced if you don't deal with them I know it's hard, I know it's fearful, but when you deal with your emotions, when you give voice to your emotions, it, it frees you. You can sleep better, you're not stressed out. A lot of people medicate themselves simply because uh, they don't know how to give voice or to deal with those emotions. And the funny thing was, Dr. Edith uh, Eager, uh, she spent about a quarter of the book talking about her experience in the, the death camps, but most of the book she spent talking about um, the psychology the psychology of of um, how to get through trauma and a lot of people are going through trauma and dealing with it and bottling it up and bottling up it up and trying to cover what they're trying to cover and the Lord says you don't need to try and cover it up you need to give you need to deal with those emotions you need to give voice to those emotions you need to say what happened you need to say what you're feeling you need to say i was raped i was taken advantage of i, I was you you know whatever happened to you and you just and you just need to know that you can be a victim or you can be a victor it's your choice and and sometimes if it's really traumatic you would need therapy and it's and it's no shame if you need to get a therapist or a doctor to help you get tools and you're not a worse because you are afraid you're human and you have human emotions and human emotions are okay to deal with but just as long as you don't let them control your life and you know what if you don't give voice to them they will control your life uh dr eager in the choice said after the war after uh, losing her parents um, she had major flashbacks, she had major stuff going on, because she didn't tell anyone what she was feeling, and she didn't even tell her children, 
what she experienced. One day, she talked about in the book, her daughter bought her a book with a picture of uh, uh, prisoners from the camps, and she ran in the bathroom. She couldn't. She couldn't explain anything to her. And there was a time where she was on a bus and she was having an attack because uh, one of the guys on the bus uh, were saying, ma'am, you need to pay. And it reminded her one of the, of the guards. So, and because she didn't give voice to those feelings, it manifested in different ways in her life. And uh, when you don't give voice to your emotions, it manifests in different ways in your life. And you may not know that it's manifesting in your marriage. You may not know those are that issues from your childhood are manifesting in your marriage because you haven't given voice to it. You haven't asked for help. You just anesthetize yourself. You can anesthetize yourself with anger. You can anesthetize yourself with over sexing, over drugging, over alcohol, and whatever it is, over shopping, over eating. But all of that, whatever you can do, is just a symptom. It's not the real problem. You need to deal with the issue that is going on inside. For, and the first thing with dealing with the issue is giving it a voice. You have to say it, you have to write it, you have to do whatever you need to to get it out, to get it out of your body, because the more it stays in your body, is the more it gives you cancers and stress and all these illnesses. You're, you're trying to figure out why you have chronic headaches. You're trying to figure out why you have chronic back pain and the doctors can't find anything wrong with you. It's all that pain and all that hurt and all that struggle that you've been struggling with for years and you have been unable to voice. And I just want to say that you're strong enough to deal with whatever it is. You're strong enough to deal with whatever it is. And you're running because you think if you deal with whatever it is, it will, if you face whatever it is head on, it will kill you. But beloved, it's the opposite that is killing you. It's the running that is killing you. You need to stop running and know that you're strong enough to deal with whatever. And you need to know that there's nothing new under the sun. That that you are not alone in dealing with whatever it is. Whether it be financial mistakes, whether it be relational mistakes, whether it be, you know, whatever, whatever was traumatic whether it be a parent leaving, whether it be a job loss, whether it be whatever, uh, somebody you love dying, know that you're strong enough to deal with whatever. And if you need help, help is available for you with whatever you're dealing with. Like whether it be professional help, there are so many groups, even on Facebook, there are so many groups of different kinds for people struggling with different things. There are so many resources that don't cost anything at all. And there are organizations out there that can help you if you need to pay for a therapy or to begin a group. You don't have to struggle alone, even if you're broke and don't have any money. There are there are Facebook groups of all kinds. You just have to type it into the Facebook subject bar, and somebody will be there to help you. 
So you don't have to struggle with this alone. Whatever issue it is, from pornography to struggling with being a mom to um, to struggling with being a dad and knowing how to be a dad and take care of children, there were groups for that. Um, there were several groups for for everything and you're not alone you're human and we're all going through the same thing we're all we're all sorry i should say we're not all going through the same thing but we're all going through something and whatever you're going through somebody else is going through it too and the freedom you'll find when you give voice to it when you give light to it, will be incredible. Because the thing with the devil is, he likes to keep the children of God in the dark. Because without shedding light on things, without giving voice to things, you can stay there and think that it's just you. But when you give voice to things, you find out there are other people struggling with what you're struggling with. There are other people who are still in the closet. There are other people who you shopping for, you know, uh, to, to hide what they're really dealing with. There are other people dealing with eating disorders. There are other people dealing with whatever you're struggling with and you're not alone and when you bring light to it it bring it brings healing light brings healing um dark brings suffering light brings healing the dark brings suffering you you have a choice today um you can either walk in freedom or walk in bondage and the first step to freedom is is telling god exactly what you're feeling about the, about whatever situation like what i did with reading those that doctor's book I told him what I was seeing and what I was feeling. And by giving voice to it, it lost its power. So I'm like, when you give voice to something, it loses power over you. When you give voice and light to something, any issue, it loses power over you. When you keep it hidden, when you keep a lid on it, the power, the power rema remains in its hands, and you remain in bondage. So if you want freedom, all you have to do is give voice to it, and then once you give voice to it, you can find a community of people, even on this very website that is that. Can, can help you with whatever issue that you're struggling with or or the group can lead you to someone who can help you today is a day of freedom you don't have to live in bondage you don't have to live in fear and no it's no it's not just you there are a lot of people struggling with whatever you're dealing with and the lord says today tell my beloved children that that they can be free he said beloved i wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health and health doesn't mean just physical health that's one aspect it means mental health spiritual health psychological health he wants you to be in shalom, entire health and wholeness. That is his wish for you, uh, to be in entire health, not to just smile and paste it on like it's okay. 
he wants you to actually be on the inside how you look on the outside you look content you look thriving you look like you've got it all together on the outside but you're dying and falling apart on the inside now he wants your in your inside to look and feel like you're outside and he's calling for this today so thank you lord thank you lord for your word today thank you lord for your freedom thank you lord for your love thank you lord for your grace we embrace your freedom today in the name of jesus amen and if you if any of you out there don't know the lord all you have to do is in your own words in your own way say that you need him a lot of pastors and a lot of preachers say say the sinner's prayer or to pray after them but i like to tell people he in this moment he doesn't want to hear my words he wants to hear your words he's dying to hear your words so do it now and if you need help with that after you've done it or you're telling me rachel what what's next um the the bible site ne- next after receiving the word of god is to um is to um get into no next after receiving jesus christ in your life is to get down to the word of god and then there's a good site that i use um to read the word of god it's called biblegateway.com that's b i b l e g a t e w a y all one word dot com it's biblegateway.com and in there you'll find all the resources they have bible reading plans they have different versions of audio bibles they have different versions of print bibles that you can use and that's a way to get started And also on YouTube, there are several good churches meeting online now. Like, it doesn't matter if you uh, are a more traditional person or a more, you know, um, non-traditional person. There is a pastor out there that will speak to you. And many of these church communities have their own sub communities where you could get involved and join community so that's my my three things so um tell the lord that you want him in your life in your own words in your own way just say what's on your heart um be get into the word of god by using Bible Gateway and other apps and see, find the community. There are great churches online. You just have to look at, um, look on YouTube for, for online churches. And, or if you want to message me, you can do that as well. I can recommend some great online churches to you. Um, Have a good day. Bye.
My soul is arrested. It's such a mess. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. I'm free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. No longer bound. No chains hold me. My soul is resting. It's such a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. I'm free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. No longer found. No more chains holding me. My soul is resting. It's such a great blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. Be free today. I'm free, praise the Lord, I'm free, no longer pass, no more chains holding me, my soul is resting, it's a jubilant blessing, praise the Lord, hallelujah, I'm free.